Hey, what's going on, my friend? Christopher Harold here from Making the Impact in Ministries. And in this video here, I want to talk about if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, these things would not exist. Hey, my friend, make sure that you subscribe to this channel by clicking the subscribe button and also click on that bell button so that way you'll be notified live each time when I upload something new. All right, my friend, welcome back. So I, I, I want to share this video with you because I want to help equip. So if you are already a believer in Christ, this is going to be a more equipping video. And if you're not a believer in Christ, I definitely want you to watch this video here because I'm going to share some things with you that I hope you will give some serious thought and serious consideration to because... Truthfully, you know, your eternity is at stake on what you on what you believe, my friend. So let's talk about some things that have uh, been, been, been on my mind as of late. And uh, I, I want to talk about some things that, that, that can really help you right now. So let's talk about, see, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, if he did not rise from the dead, these things wouldn't exist. It's things that you and I take for granted. It's things that, that we kind of just nonchalant about. We kind of just ignore, we kind of just like, okay, yeah, whatever, right? But none of these things I want to share with you would happen, all right, if this event didn't happen. So, what? what not, what's the first thing? If, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, what's one thing, that is in no particular order, but what's, what's one thing that wouldn't exist? Well, one thing that would not exist would be Christianity. So, now, Christianity is based off the simple fact of Jesus Christ rising from the dead. It's not based off of rules. It's not based off of religious rituals. It's not based, it's not even based off of anything uh, in the first, like, 95% of the books of the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's not based off anything in that. Christianity is based off of the single historical event of Jesus Christ rising from the dead. And that's it. That's what it's based off of. Uh, if, if, if you read, if you see 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it pretty much goes through that. And basically, and what, what that chapter says is that if Jesus Christ and I are not rationally dead, everything we're doing is in vain. Uh, it's useless. Uh, we lied on God. I mean, this year is it, 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 how Christianity started, based off of the supernatural resurrection of Jesus Christ. Which, is, which has been presented as an historical fact, right? And that's what it's based off of. See, any other religion, like say Islam or something like that, that, that denies, you know, Jesus went to the cross, and of course, the denial of resurrection opposes that. You know, that's why, you know, all religions are not the same. Islam is not, is not the same as Christianity, you know? And so, Christianity is based off of that. So, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, my friend, Christianity would not exist. And when Christianity has been in existence, for over 2,000 plus years, right? So time rewatching this video here. So, but if this event did not take place as an historical fact, Christianity would not exist, all right? Uh, see, see 1 Corinthians 15 for further reference. Uh, also, time split in two. And this is huge. This is ignored uh, a lot of times if I get to discussion with a, a quote-unquote atheist, which is not, you know, really an atheist, but uh, someone who claims to be an atheist, right? Uh, I often, uh, I hear a lot of just really crazy, just out of the brain, just like suicide <laughs> and by the mind, it's like really killing intellect rejection. And a lot of folks, some people say, well, Jesus, Jesus wasn't real. He didn't exist. And so I always say, well, what, what year is it? They were like, huh? I said, what year are we right now? They would, they would tell me the year. I say, since when? See, if, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, time as we know it, what not? It's split in two. What's time as we know it? Time as we know it is what? You have BC and what? AD. Right? It doesn't matter what you believe, what religion, what philosophy, and the religion, I mean all the religions, including evolution. Uh, you know, which is a religion, uh, but 
Everybody based their time off of one single person. Everybody. Time split in two because of who? Jesus Christ. It didn't split in two for no other person ever, ever existed. Nobody else. Only for Jesus Christ. And BC is what? Before Christ, AD, you know, for, in the year of our Lord, right? So Jesus Christ and I are right. So check this out. My intellectual friend, my atheistic friend, my agnostic friend. If this didn't take place, why did time split in two? We date everything based off of this. Even the myth is that, you know, the world came into existence 4.6 billion years ago, right? It's based off of this, right? So, so, so Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead as an historical fact. Time wouldn't split in two. There'll be no reason to, right? He's been just like everybody else. There's another great, uh, maybe a, a crazy religious leader, made some religious claims, but he died and it was over with, like everybody else, right? No. Times for them to offer him and him alone. Check this out. All right. Uh, if another one would be uh, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, holidays we celebrate, such as like uh, Christmas, Easter, and even some pagan holidays. I, I, can't, I can even put a Halloween because I didn't kind of base off of that. Uh, but for sure, the most commercialized holidays, I know in America and probably in the entire world, uh, Christmas and Easter. If Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, we wouldn't have these holidays that we celebrate. Right? There would be no reason for celebrating Christmas, because Christmas is what? It celebrating the virgin birth, or God, God, God became a baby, right? Yeah. And Easter celebrates what? The resurrection. Easter celebrates. We wouldn't celebrate that. You know, we wouldn't we would not have these holidays if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, my friend. And no matter if, if, if you if you paganized it now, where you know you worshiping Santa Claus and they're shopping and gifts on Christmas and Easter, you got the Easter Bunny and you know trying to paganize it or you know anything like that. It doesn't matter. And I know the roots. I know the roots. You know, pagan roots of both of these. You have to explain to me the roots. I know the roots. But the point is that we know in Western um, in, uh, in the Western civilization. These days represent the birth of Jesus Christ and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? These, uh, that's what they represent. Well, I know the pagan roots. You want to try to comment below and tell me the pagan roots. I know the pagan roots. But that's what they're celebrated for, right? So if that did not happen, we wouldn't have those holidays. And how many of you be pissed off at Christmas? <laughs> you, know, you know, how many of you have a lot of guests uh, and the kids liking the, the Easter eggs and all that stuff, right? But... Since the historical fact happened, Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we have these holidays. And one more, I'm gonna do one more, and this is huge, but if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, hope will not exist. Um, a person who does not believe in God has no hope. They live life with no hope. Actually, and their very existence is really, uh, is meaningless, it's not purposeful. See, since Jesus rose from the dead, it, 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 it gives us hope. Hope that there's what? Life after death. He's the first to ever do it, right? The Bible says that, 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 that Jesus Christ conquered death, right? And he says, death is his last enemy, right? He said, oh, oh death, where's your victory? Oh, death, where's your sting? Go read 1 Corinthians 15. You'll see those verses in there, right? But hope, a person who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior has no hope. You know, uh, that's why you see so many freaking mass shootings going on and murders and, and hate and, 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 and all this just evil going around because people live a life with no hope, right? They have no hope after death. And based off their philosophy and beliefs, a lot of folks believe that they won't be held accountable for their actions, right? So that's why they go out and murder 20 people and then kill themselves and feel like, oh, it's all over, right? I won't be held accountable. That's why someone like Hitler can go out and murder 6 to 11 million people and feel like, you know what? I won't be held accountable, right? I mean, shucks. That's how people do. But see, so Jesus Christ did die and then it uh, was raised from the dead, we have hope. You know what I'm saying? I lost a loved one this morning. I lost an aunt this morning. But I have hope. I would see her. Why? Because I knew she knew, she knew Jesus. Right? I have hope after death. Now here's the deal. I talked to my wife this morning. I don't want to die. 
I'm be honest with you. And I know you don't want to die. Nobody wants to die. I don't want to die. But you know, why do we die? You know, so, you know uh, they, they say there's two things certain in life, right? They say, what, well, death and taxes. But you know what? That's not even true because you can evade taxes or you can find a crooked tax accountant, right? And not have to pay any taxes. But you know what? You're going to die. I'm going to die. And I don't want to die. You don't want to die. We all have a will to live, right? But why do we die? It's not because that's how natural it is. It's not natural to die, right? It's not because it is what it is. No. You die, I ain't going to die because you and I have earned it. The Bible says this. It says the wages of sin is dead. I'm in business. When I, when I sell uh, my, my product or service to a client or a customer, I've earned that commission. I've earned that income in business world. If you, you know, if you work a job and you go put in eight to 10 hours a day at that job, when they give you your paycheck, you've earned those wages. Well, you and I have earned death. He said, well, Chris, how do we earn death? You earn death by breaking God's law. Have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? Have you ever coveted something that wasn't yours, right? Have you ever lusted after, after, after someone, right? The Bible says you lust after someone. Jesus said you committed adultery in your heart. Um, have, you, have you ever used God's name in vain? You know, you ever said GD or JC or OMG, right? The God who gave you life, the God who, 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 who allow you to see, allow you to hear, allow you to touch, feel, and taste, and enjoy food. Like the very God is allowing blood to flow through your heart and puff through your body right? you have to think about it, right? Who gave breath in your lungs right now. That very, that very God, the creator, you use his name as a cuss word. We don't even use people with that maybe nice super deserve to use it as a cuss word, like a Hitler or a, a Jeffrey Dahmer or a, a, a Bin Laden, right? People who murdered and hurt a lot of people. We don't use that name as a cuss word, but we use God's name as a cuss word. The Bible considered that's blasphemy. That's very serious. In the Old Testament, you was punishable by death. Very serious, my friend. Have you dishonored your parents? Right? Have you had sex with someone who you're not married to? Have you had sex with the same sex? Right? So, see, we have, all, the Bible considers those, all those a sin. The Bible says no thief, no, 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 no immoral person, no homosexual, no idolater. We inherit the kingdom of God. It said all thieves and all liars, all swindlers will place will be in the lake of fire. See Revelation 21, 8. See 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10. See Galatians 5. It said it, 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 it lists out everything that's going to keep you separated from the kingdom of God. Partying, smoking weed, getting drunk, having, having sex, having orgies, watching pornography, right? Idolatry. When you, when, you, when you have created, a, have you created a God in your own image? And he said, oh, Chris, I haven't made it. I, I, I haven't made a graven image. I haven't made a statue or something I'm bowing down to. What you have in your mind. You have in your mind. Because see, most of us, most of us created God in our own image. And our God is not holy. Our God is not just. Our God is not righteous. Our God will not punish sin. Well, let me ask you a question. Would you consider a judge in town a good judge if you have a, a criminal who's committed these heinous acts and he doesn't punish that person just because maybe they say, well, judge, you're a good person, judge, or let me go? No, that'd be a bad judge, right? And people would say, well, Chris, uh, I think God is this way. I feel God is this way. Once someone says, I think or I feel, you have violated the second commandment or the Ten Commandments. You have made a graven image. You have made a God in your mind. And God said the first commandment, you should have no other gods before me. See, we can't make up a God that suits our sins, that suits us, that makes us feel good at night. Because that God doesn't exist. That God is a figment of our imagination. And, and, and we might try to feel good. We might try to ignore the truth and reality. But it's a false God. It's a false God. See, we can't make up a God. We got to accept God for who he is. There's some things uh, about the Bible that I don't like. I don't like going out and telling people, listen, you need to turn from your sins or you're going to go to hell. But that's what the Bible said. And what is hell? Hell is God's punishment. It's God's prison. Right? Because he's holy, just, and righteous. But here's the deal. 
If you have broken those commands, you lied, you've stolen, you've cheated, you've committed sex outside of marriage, you've committed sex with the same sex, you've, you've covered it with someone that's had, you know, you dishonored your parents, you, 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 you've done all these things that you, you get drunk, you get, you know, all kinds of crazy things, you violated that, and you've earned that. Now, I'm not talking about just death, when your physical body stops working, your heart stops pumping, we're talking about eternal death. Because you know what? You're going to live forever. It doesn't stop the moment you stop reading with these bodies. No. You, you were created to live forever. And you are going to live forever, regardless if you want to believe it or not. And there's two places you're going to be. Both start with an H, and, 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 and both are totally opposite. Heaven and hell. And here's the ticket. Do you know what God did for sinners? So they won't have to go to hell. You and I are both sinners. We, we, we've earned death. That's why we're going to die. Okay? We've earned it. But you, do you have to be, but you don't have to go there. God is good, he's just, and he's merciful. And he says that he doesn't desire for anyone to perish, but for all men to come to repentance. God said, I do, I do not delight in the death of the wicked, of the sinner. God doesn't take delight in that. But he would give you your heart's desire. If you don't have nothing, if you don't, you don't want to have anything to do with him, so it's giving you a free gift of eternal life, he would give you that choice. But you don't have to go to hell. So don't get so mad and upset. Why would God send someone to hell? He won't. He lets you choose that. But you know what God did? God came down 2,000 years ago in Jesus Christ. He lived a sinless life. And he took your punishment on the cross. He was murdered, beaten, and bruised for your sins on the cross. And he died. But he rose. What are we talking about right now? He rose and all power in his hand three days later, my friend. And he, he claimed victory over death. And if you will repent and turn from your sins and trust in Jesus Christ alone, don't trust in your own goodness because you don't have any. You cannot earn salvation by good works. Your good works cannot bribe the God of this universe. You, why? Because you have committed crimes against him. You are a criminal in God's eyes. The Bible says you are an enemy against God. This is what the Bible says. You are an enemy. He knows your very thought life. He knows your very thought life. You are an enemy against God. However, Christ came to reconcile God and man. Jesus Christ was God. The Bible said God was in Jesus Christ reconciling the world to himself. So now you can have a relationship with your creator once again through Jesus Christ. However, in order to receive the forgiveness of sins and to receive the free, free gift of eternal life, John 3, 16, it's more than just believing. Believe doesn't mean some intellectual belief. Say, yeah, I believe in God. The Bible says the devil and the demons believe in God. Adolf Hitler said he believed in God and he murdered 11 million people. He felt that was the right thing to do. So believing in God is not enough. No, you have to obey. You have to trust. You have to turn from your sins and give your life totally to Christ. And then, my friend, your sins can be forgiven. And then the free gift of eternal life will be imparted into you. There's nothing you and I can earn. It's a free gift. Now, to me, rejecting eternal life is just as foolish as a billionaire coming to you and saying, hey, would you like to, would you like me to give you a billion dollars right now on the spot? And, and you sit there and you think about it, well, a billion dollars, huh? You know, uh, if you give me a billion dollars, I might gotta pay taxes on that. And I really don't wanna pay no taxes on that, you know. So, uh, I mean, that'll be foolish, right? You and I know we're both gonna die. There's only two places to go. At, at the, the Bible says, after death comes, there's a point of man to die once after death comes to judgment. Jesus Christ is going to judge the living and the dead. And all, all your deeds, all your, all your, the Bible says every idle word you have said will be brought, brought against you. All your evil thoughts, all your deeds will be brought against you on the day of judgment. Everything you've done from a youth on up, my friend, it doesn't matter how many lies you have told, will be brought to you. And at the day of judgment, the Bible said that you'll be held without excuse. You can't make any excuses then. And you know what? There is no do-over. See, the Bible says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear God, then you're not a very wise person. You're not a very wise person. Because God is holy. God is just. And he has appointed a day when he's going to judge the world in righteousness through Christ Jesus. So, my friend, if you have not repented and turned from your sins, what better day is it? What sin is there out there worth it to send you to hell? Name me one sin. Fornication? Is that worth going to hell over? 
lying, cheating, backbiting, being greedy, a swindler, taking advantage of people financially, right? What what sin is worth spending eternity in torment, being punished for that? What sin? Name me one sin. Let me ask you a question before I let you go. Would you sell one of your eyes for a million bucks? You're probably thinking like, well, a million bucks, I, I, I might sell one for a million bucks. Well, let me ask you this. Would you sell both of your eyes for 20, 20 million dollars? Now you're gonna think about it, right? He's like, well, think about it. If I give you 20 million dollars, then you can go see the world. Actually, you can't go see the world, right? Because you can't see it, it would be darkness. So, if you're in your right mind, you wouldn't sell your, there's no price that you would ever sell your eyes for. Why? Because to you, your eyes are precious, right? You know what the Bible says about our eyes? The Bible says our eyes are just a lamp unto our soul. So if your eyes are that precious to you, how much more precious and valuable should your soul be, which is eternal? See, we value the things that are not. The Bible says this, it's better to go into heaven with one eye than to go in the hell with two good eyes. It's best to, to pluck out that bad eye that's causing you to live in sin than to go into hell with two eyes. So how much more value to you is your soul? What is the profit of man to gain the whole world but do what? Lose his soul. Is your soul precious to you? My friend, I hope you find this valuable. Uh, post your comments below if you have any questions about what I shared today. Uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel as well. If you like more content like this, and hit the share button as well. Share this out with others as well. Uh, text it out to 100 of your friends you know, as well. And just share this video and continue to subscribe and like it as well. I'll be posting some more new things soon as well. So I hope, my friend, that if you're a Christian, this help imp improve your faith and, and, you know, and greatly increase your faith and realizing that, that uh, Christianity is solid, it's backed by history, right? And if, if, if you're not a Christian, I hope that I've made you think. Because you know why? The moment you start breathing is over. And when are you going to die? You don't know. It could be today. Like I said, I had a loved one passed away this morning. We didn't know. It was unexpected. It could be your time. It could be up today, too. So just something to seriously consider. Where are you going to spend eternity? It's the most important question you'll ever, ever answer while on this side. Not how much money you're going to make. Not how many cars you're going to have. Not how many women you're going to have. Not, 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 you know, not how many awards and, and your status in life. That's irrelevant. Where are you going to spend eternity? That's the most important question you'll ever answer, my friend. Because your life truly depends on it. Trust Jesus Christ. Repent and, and trust Jesus Christ. Any questions, comment below, my friend. Peace and God bless.